know, yeah. I feel, feel pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? Very lucky. I mean, look at, I've been doing this 52 years and, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm being, I make a living, you know, most yeah. people in craft and arts, it's the opposite. They've got to wait tables, teach, do whatever they can so they can pursue their passion on the side, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and maybe hope that one day the balance shifts a little bit, you know, if yeah. they're lucky, right? Yeah. That's the norm. For me, it's the opposite. This, this baby has financed all my extracurricular activity instead mm -hmm. of the opposite mm -hmm. way around. Mm -hmm. And I just feel so, so blessed, you know, honestly. I don't know. I get paid to have fun, really. Uh, Not you know, <laughs> but <laughs> obviously you've managed it though. And, you know, I've had a number of conversations in the last couple of weeks with guitar makers, frankly, who are deeply, deeply conflicted with the elevating prices of their guitars and mm. selling to the establishment, they would say, and that that's somehow for them soul crushing and they <laughs> well at the same time confessing that they don't really have the money they need to sustain the life in their family in the in the way that they would like to either and so it's this really fascinating juxtaposition that they put themselves in with this conflict between their elevating prices and the success they have yet uncomfortable with it and somehow uncomfortable with those who are choosing to invest in their instruments because they feel like somehow the fact that it's a guitar is less than that it's a valuable commodity i don't know whether that's true or not but that's the impression that's the, that's the narrative they're telling themselves and me hmm. and, uh, I, and i could see where they're coming from i don't i don't feel that way um hmm. maybe i've just accepted that it's it's the nature of, of, of the world. You know, a portion of what I make goes purely to players, mm -hmm. you know, but they may be more experienced at this point. You know, they're not, they're not 20, 20 year olds, you know, right. just getting in the biz because they don't have the money. Yeah. Um, and some are going to collector types, but they're collectors who play guitar. That's mm -hmm. why this is the thing they're collecting because right. they actually play them and they mm -hmm. like owning them or and then maybe they like buying and selling also you know mm -hmm. and fair enough you know people do that with other objects but they are guitar players i have actually discouraged people who want to purely invest for investment but they don't play mm -hmm. i said actually it's not a good investment if it's only sitting in the case if it's not being vibrated and played it's not going to develop and it's not going to hold on to or increase its value mm -hmm. it's got to be played so i said don't do it you know, waste of your money, you know, buy a painting or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so there is that. And yeah, my prices aren't cheap anymore, but they're competitive. There are people who charge more than me mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I feel I'm, my prices are fair to me and my customers. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and, you know, and I still get customers who say, you know, you could, you could charge more, you know, you're doing things nobody else does. I said, yeah, but if I charge more then less people would afford to do it. And I want to have fun, you know, right. excuse me, doing this for selfishly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but so I, I get it. And it's true. There's always going to be musicians who, you know, money is tight. Mm -hmm. I mean, flamenco players, you know, I make flamenco guitars. But these days, you know, most players are, you know, living in poverty. Mm -hmm. So they're usually buying cheap classical guitars and dropping the action and trying to make do with that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause that's all they could afford. And, you know, I, I understand that that's the nature mm -hmm. of that genre in a way, except for a few big stars kind of thing. And thankfully, you know, Jesse Cook played, uh, has a couple of my guitars and they were his main mm -hmm. axes for about 15 or 16 years. He's mm -hmm. now switched, you know, to another Spanish maker, you know, mm -hmm. that that's what happens in the music world. They're looking for new tones or different things, or, you know, yeah. Uh, but he was great for all those years and he loved my guitar. He said he, it was his main touring acts because it stood up to the mm -hmm. climate changes as he bopped around the planet on tour, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and whereas Spanish ones, you know, the neck's swinging up and down and it's cracking and it's this and, you know, um, so I, you know, I can't complain. And so, yeah, I'm comfortable with the mix of mm -hmm. players and collector players. And I don't have a problem. Uh, also, I know that even so, um, 
my guitars are still only about the price of a, of a starting violin, classical violin, like a new maker, not even these people who take out a mortgage and buy an old one, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but most symphony and serious players do that. Mm -hmm. That's the instrument they want. They accept this is the nature of the world they're in. Yeah. What you do. It's the overhead of your business. You take yeah. a mortgage and you slowly pay it off and you've got this incredible instrument. So they don't hesitate to spend 90, 150,000 on an old violin, yeah. you know, or even 30 or 40,000 from a new builder. Mm -hmm. And and they play it in at home for three, four years before mm -hmm. they feel it's opened up enough to, you know, be in concert. Right. And they accept that. No problem. Mm -hmm. Even I think the same thing will happen in the acoustic guitar. It just yeah. We just don't have 400 years of <laughs> instruments yeah, out you there. Know, there's, there's, <laughs> and, and, you know, with pickups on guitars, yeah. you can make a great guitar sound so-so. You can make a crappy guitar sound okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just by uh, EQing, right? And so many people are playing through pickups. So it, to some respect, it, it almost doesn't matter. But mm. don't don't let anybody know I said that, right? Well, I think that technology will develop as well. You know, yeah. so those are the limitations of that technology today, but we'll get there. Thank you for watching and listening. You can find more episodes wherever you listen to your podcasts. And a special thanks to those who support us on Patreon. It's your support that enables us to do this work.